Can you tell me what, what, I, what I'm going to ask you is why are people, why are people walking around in here looking at trees? Because this is going out, this going out in the net and so on. We have people all over there. It's because I've written here uh, a guided walk, uh, a tree walk to the fountain garden, which is this garden this here. Garden. And I've picked out 12 trees, 12, 12 different trees to show uh, trees of different ages, trees of different colour, trees of different species, texture. Wait, wait, how many, how, are you getting this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh my God, sorry, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> sorry, I, I, right, OK. So, uh, um, and I've put them on um, a map here yes. so that people can follow around and see the garden and see uh, and, and have a closer look at some of these trees. Yeah. And there are the paragraphs I've put down with the different names of the trees. So and, it's and, just, oh, and, 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 and are, these, are these most important trees or what? what, what I mean, for, for me, a tree is a tree is a tree. Now, what's the difference between all these trees? Well, you've got different, you've got, uh, different species. Different species. Different species, different, different ages. Uh, and so it's to get people to look a little bit closely, uh, a little bit more closely than they would do normally. Um, and, it, and it takes them around the garden. So they start here and end up back here at the end of their little walk and they feel they've achieved something and, and, and perhaps learnt something. So all I've done is to put the, uh, put the, uh, uh, the information on here, put numbers on the trees uh, um, and let them, right. let them do it well, themselves. Well, let, let's, let us go to tree number one. Let's take tree, let's go to tree number one. What's tree number one? Well, well here we are in Eaton Square on a Sunday and people are walking around again, we said, looking at trees. Now, why are they looking at trees? For God's sake, aren't there enough trees in the country? Now, we're going to tree number one, as, as allocated by this good man here. What did you want to introduce yourself? Stephen Smith. I'm the landscape manager here at Grosvenor. The landscape manager. Now, you, you see, you don't have a caretaker, you have a landscape manager. All right. Well, this is tree number one here. This is tree number yeah. one. So what, what's special about this? Well, this it's a just a tree, <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs> this is it's called Circidophyllum japonicum. Uh, um, and it's because uh, it has a circular... Well, so, circu go, go slowly. Circidophyllum. Let's let, let, let have that again. <laughs> Circidophyllum japonicum. Circidophyllum japonicum. Yeah, it's a Japanese tree. Is it? Yeah. Uh, um, it, it's a, a, a popular tree to be planted in, in, uh, uh, in England. Uh, it grows to a, a very great height. This is a very young specimen here. It'll grow uh, uh, as large as that maple over there uh, uh, adjacent. Um, one, of the, one of its most amazing things is that in the autumn, the leaves turn yellow, not so unusual, uh, but it smells of burnt sugar, of toffee apple. And you can walk past the garden there and you'll smell toffee apple. And you think, what on earth is that coming from? And it's this tree in its autumn leaf. That's the, that's the, 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 uh, the scent that it has. Well, I don't know if you've learned something. I've certainly learned something there. A tree that smells of toffee apple. So what, let's go to tree number two then. Let's go to tree number two. Okay, let's go to tree number two. Where are we? Well, here we are walking to tree number two. It's this one here. Ah, yeah. no, just, just among the foliage I can see a two. Now, how do we, how do we get into that? Well, you can, you can, uh, get we can get, get in around there. And it's, we've lost the sun, so I don't know where this is. It's it. Have we got light enough? Let's see. Tree number two. So here it is. Tree number two. Right. Now, what's special about this one? Well, this is a Japanese maple. Uh, um, so this is uh, um, Acer uh, japonicum. Um, and uh, again, beautiful leaves. You can see when you look underneath the tree, you can see that it's not very, not very bright now, but when the sun shines through there and you've got this dappled shade, it looks really beautiful. It makes a nice uh, uh, shady, like an umbrella, uh, uh, um, on, a, on a hot day. You can come here and be cool and look at the trees and enjoy the sun filtering through. Now for the uninitiated, what's the difference between this Japanese maple and the normal maple, which I would associate with a country called Canada? Well, I wouldn't think of no, this well, this one. This one has a. This, this is a, a very small-leaved uh, uh, tree. Uh, um, there is another one, um, uh, just on the lawn there. Uh, that's a, a Acer platinoides. That's a um, the uh, a purple maple. Uh, and you can see there. If you can see just through, see the tree there. See how much bigger the leaves are. They're the same shape, but they're about oh five or ten times the size uh, as these ones here. So a very different style of uh, of growth. Uh, um, yeah. But the it's Canadian a, maple, I know, it's a, you know, it's a, has a strange sort of leaf. That's it, and palmate the, leaf. Pa, yes, it's palmate yes. leaf. And these are the same. Look, these are the same. They've got palmate leaves, but they're much smaller. It's a much more delicate tree, this one. And those are much more, uh, um, you know, solid. 
uh, and the um, yeah, acyplatinoides, and that's the Norway maple, actually, that one. Norway maple. Yeah. So there I'm we are. Learning. I, I hope I hope you are learning because I'm <laughs> learning a lot here. Now, what the, and what have we got that's really interesting again? Because Very unusual every, ones. I think I, I think. I think there's, there, are, there are two more, perhaps. There's, there's the, um, the planes. Number seven, lucky seven. Uh, seven. Um, which is in the centre of the lawn over there. Let's go and have a look at that. Well, here we go again. Tree number seven. Is that the one up there? That's the one there. You can see that. Huge tree. Now, what, 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 well, what is that? I've, I've um, uh, put that one down. Uh, and this one here, yeah, these two planes, uh -huh. um, because although they're the same species, they are uh, uh, they are um, showing different features. This one, uh, um, uh, the central tree, has been allowed to grow. It's been allowed to fork out fairly low down. Yes, um, and that's because when it was planted in the early Victorian era, uh, they wanted a very large canopy as opposed to one that goes straight up. This one. Uh, uh, one of the edge trees here also has a large canopy, but it's very different from that one. And the reason that this has a large canopy uh, is because uh, about 60 years ago, uh, the top was blown out of it uh, um, because the, uh, uh, there was a, uh, a stick of high explosive bombs that came over. Uh, the houses were demolished there uh, um, and the, uh, this tree lost its top. And you can see what's happened. Uh, it has grown one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine branches. Yes, uh, as a result of losing that top uh, uh, during the war. So this, this, is a, a, um, uh, this predates the war, but the top was blown away and the tree has reacted, has, has, has grown uh, with, uh, just like a pollard, it is a pollard in fact, uh, um, with these uh, uh, nine branches growing out from, from that level. So we, you can see some of the history of the garden here, some of our social history as well, in this tree if you look for it, if My you know. God, you are enthusiastic. <laughs> and I tell you what, I didn't think there was anything older than me here. But, but, but I think there's a lot, there's a lot of, there's a lot that's older than me. You're talking about how old are some of these trees then? When, when was, where, what's the history of the park? For a start, the or gardens, the, gardens, the, gardens, the gardens. The gardens were laid gardens. out between the 18, 1820s and 1860s. This particular garden, I think, probably Definitely in the 18, 1860s. Uh, um, and so the trees, the, the plane trees, many of them date from then. Some of, the, some of them are post-war planting, uh, because there was a lot of damage here, as, as uh, I've just illustrated. Uh, um, and so uh, the gardens were renewed. Uh, they were all supposed to be ready for the Festival of Britain in 1951. They were all supposed to be uh, uh, replanted and ready for that. So tidied up after their war no, service. I had no idea that the Festival of Britain, uh, 1951, 1951 was it? 1951. 1951 yeah. Encompassed all of this area. I thought. Well, it, I thought it. I thought it was only where was it? Hyde Park somewhere. It was, it was in, Hyde in, Park Bat Bat or Battersea Park. Battersea Park yeah, yes. Battersea Park near here. Uh, um, well, it, it didn't come out as far as this, but because it was a national thing, every area uh, um, had had its own uh, um, uh, festival. Program uh, um, and the Grosvenor Estate decided part of its festival program would be to make sure the gardens were restored for the Festival of Britain. So uh, uh, across the country, there were different things that were going on. It was a deadline. It was a, it was a, uh, a something to aim for. And so the 1951 is a date you'll often find as a, as a, a time of restoration after the war for all sorts of things. And for the Grosvenor Estate, it was the gardens. Now tell me, was this always a posh area then? I mean, because it is very posh. I mean, the houses around here, the houses around here are worth, if you, if you haven't got a few million, you wouldn't be going to hit the square. No, no, no. You would. So, so, what, so all of this, by the way, is this exclusive to, to, to it residents? Is. It is, yeah, yeah. It they, is. They, they have no gardens at the back. Uh, um, and so uh, all the land that would have been used for back gardens uh, um, is, is pulled and put into the, in, in front. Uh, um, and so you have a much larger area to, to, uh, to treat as a garden uh, than you would do if you had a little private secluded area. At Isn't that it works very well actually with the, with the houses now, all the houses virtually are, uh, are flatted, they're all apartments. Uh, um, and so there's a larger number of people who can use garden space than would otherwise be the case. Do they have a special pass or ticket or something? Do. How do they get in they, here? They have, a, they have a pass. They have a pass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, this is this this Which is one a fob. Uh, this is wonderful. I I must do that for my own garden <laughs> as well be, be, I, because because I'm I'm sure that's lovely. You know you live somewhere and you go across the road into a private garden and you have your own private garden with lots of trees that date back to the 19th century and yeah. so on and before. 